Yeah, I think that that is the biggest hurdle for people when they are looking at this whole idea of, of ordinary. It, it sounds like you're saying all the great people who ever lived shouldn't have attempted those great feats. Uh, they should have just been ordinary people. The key is when you actually go back and look at the biographies, even of people we consider heroes, they were being ordinary. They were going to their job or they were going to uh, their, their family. They were doing something someday and it had spectacular results. Big example here for me is Rosa Parks. Uh, she didn't wake up some morning uh, in uh, Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas, and decide she was going to be the first lady of civil rights. Rather, she just decided that day, as she was sitting there on the bus on a normal day in her normal uh, uh, way of going to work, she decided that day she wasn't going to sit in the back where she usually sat. Something very ordinary. She just decided, I'm not, I'm not going to sit in the back. And that provoked the civil rights movement. She didn't know that. She was shaped by all sorts of ordinary people in ordinary circumstances, uh, pouring their lives into her, shaping her into the kind of person who that day wasn't going to sit in the back of the bus. That's what we need, not qual uh, quality time, quantity time from all of the people uh, in our lives. Our children need that quantity time. It's in the quantity time, not just the big fireworks bursts, that people get nicknames and develop character. We've got to be there for people and people need to be there for us. And that I fear is what's happening in our, in, in our next big thing society. We're finding it very difficult to be there for each other.